afternoon and welcome to the announcement of the 2021 Pulitzer Prizes. My name is Mindy Marquez and I'm co-chair of the Pulitzer Board along with my colleague, Stephen Engelberg. For the second and we hope last year, we're coming to you via remote production. We're delighted to report that the full board was able to gather at Columbia University to select the winners of this year's Pulitzers from an extraordinarily impressive group of finalists. And we are deeply grateful to the staff of the Pulitzer Board and especially to acting director Bud Clement for everything they did to get us to this moment. The year 2020 was unlike any other in the history of journalism. The nation's news organizations faced the complexity of sequentially covering a global pandemic, a racial reckoning, and a bitterly contested presidential election. The magnitude of these stories and the pace at which they unfolded pushed many in the news business to the limits of their endurance. Much of the great work this year came against a backdrop of unfathomable loss as our colleagues and fellow citizens mourned the deaths of more than 600,000 people from COVID. The events demonstrated the value of timely, accurate reporting and the crucial role the media play in our democracy. This year's winners not only covered the news, they delivered context, insights, and information available nowhere else. The reporters and editors who worked on these stories faced unparalleled challenges. In-person interviews were sometimes life-threatening. Risky, too, was the essential work done by the reporters covering the police reaction to last summer's Black Lives Matter protests. The Floyd story in particular highlighted not only the essential role of journalists, but the increasing importance of ordinary citizens in the quest for truth and justice. We want to note that the board has awarded a special citation to Darnella Frazier, the teenage witness who filmed and posted the transformative video that jolted viewers and spurred protests against police brutality around the world. The year 2020 also saw a deepening of the polarization of our society. Readers were buffeted with misinformation about the most basic facts, everything from the integrity of our elections to the safety of vaccines. The algorithms of tech giants made it possible for millions of people to inhabit an echo chamber of self-reinforcing lies. There has never been a moment in the history of our republic in which impartial, deeply reported, and documented journalism was more needed. As today's journalism prizes demonstrate, news organizations, large and small, rose to the challenge. Today, we're also announcing the Pulitzer Prizes in the seven arts and letters categories. The grim realities of 2020 intruded into this realm as well. When theaters across the country went dark in March, we expanded our rules. We allowed entries that were performed virtually or had been scheduled to be produced in theaters in 2020, but were postponed or canceled due to the pandemic. Our view was at this critical moment, the show must go on. And artists across the country gave audiences much needed relief with virtual performances. This fall, we plan to honor the Pulitzer winners of 2020, along with all of the 2019 winners in a joint in-person ceremony at Columbia University in New York City. And so, with all that in mind, on to the 105th class of Pulitzer Prize winners. Journalism. For breaking news reporting, the finalists are the staff of the Star Tribune, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the staff of the Courier Journal, Louisville, Kentucky, Helen Branswell, Andrew Joseph, and the late Sharon Begley of STAT, Boston, Massachusetts. And the prize is awarded to the staff of the Star Tribune, Minneapolis, Minnesota, for its urgent, authoritative, and nuanced coverage of the death of George Floyd at the hands of police in Minneapolis and of the reverberations that followed. For investigative reporting, the finalists are Dake Kang and the staff of Associated Press, Margie Mason and Robin McDowell of Associated Press, Matt Rochelo, Vernal Coleman, Laura Crimaldi, Evan Allen, and Brendan McCarthy of the Boston Globe. And the prize is awarded to 
Matt Rochelo, Vernal Coleman, Laura Cremaldi, Evan Allen, and Brendan McCarthy of the Boston Globe for reporting that uncovered a systematic failure by state governments to share information about dangerous truck drivers that could have kept them off the road, prompting immediate reforms. For explanatory reporting, the finalists are Ed Young of The Atlantic, Mega Raja Gopalan, Allison Killing, and Christo Bushik of BuzzFeed News, New York. Andrew Chung, Lawrence Hurley, Andrea Januta, Jamie Dowdle, and Jackie Botts of Reuters. We are awarding two prizes in this category. The winners are Ed Young of The Atlantic for a series of lucid, definitive pieces on the COVID-19 pandemic that anticipated the course of the disease, synthesized the complex challenges the country faced, illuminated the U.S. government's failures, and provided clear and accessible context for the scientific and human challenges it posed. And Andrew Chung, Lawrence Hurley, Andrea Januta, Jamie Dowdell, and Jackie Botts of Reuters for an exhaustive examination powered by a pioneering data analysis of U.S. federal court cases of the obscure legal doctrine of qualified immunity and how it shields police who use excessive force from prosecution. For local reporting, the finalists are Jack Dolan and Brittany Mejia of the Los Angeles Times, Kathleen McGrory and Neil Bathy of the Tampa Bay Times, the staff of the Post and Courier, Charleston, South Carolina. And the prize goes to Kathleen McGrory and Neil Bethy of the Tampa Bay Times for resourceful, creative reporting that exposed how a powerful and politically connected sheriff built a secretive intelligence operation that harassed residents and used grades and child welfare records to profile school children. For national reporting, the finalists are Staffs of the Marshall Project, AL.com, Birmingham, Indie Star, Indianapolis, and the Invisible Institute, Chicago. The staff of the New York Times. The staff of the Wall Street Journal. And the prize is awarded to Staffs of the Marshall Project, AL.com, Birmingham, Indie Star, Indianapolis, and the Invisible Institute, Chicago for a year-long investigation of canine units and the damage that police dogs inflict on Americans, including innocent citizens and police officers, prompting numerous statewide reforms. For international reporting, the finalists are BuzzFeed News New York and the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, Washington, D.C., the staff of The New York Times, the staff of The Wall Street Journal, Mega Raja Gopalan, Allison Killing, and Christo Bushik of BuzzFeed News, New York. The prize is awarded to Mega Raja Gopalan, Allison Killing, and Christo Bushik of BuzzFeed News, New York. For a series of clear and compelling stories that use satellite imagery and architectural expertise, as well as interviews with two dozen former prisoners to identify a vast new infrastructure built by the Chinese government for the mass detention of Muslims. For feature writing, the finalists are Nadia Drost, freelance contributor, The California Sunday Magazine, Mitchell S. Jackson, freelance contributor, Runner's World. Greg Jaffe of the Washington Post. We are awarding two prizes in this category. The winners are Nadia Drost, freelance contributor, The California Sunday Magazine, for a brave and gripping account of global migration that documents a group's journey on foot through the Darien Gap, one of the most dangerous migrant routes in the world. And Mitchell S. Jackson, freelance contributor, Runner's World for a deeply affecting account of the killing of Ahmad Arbery that combined vivid writing, thorough reporting, and personal experience to shed light on systemic racism in America. For commentary, the finalists are Roy S. Johnson of Alabama Media Group, Birmingham, Melinda Henneberger of the Kansas City Star, Michael Paul Williams of the Richmond, Virginia Times-Dispatch. The prize is awarded to Michael Paul Williams of the Richmond, Virginia Times-Dispatch.
for penetrating and historically insightful columns that guided Richmond, a former capital of the Confederacy, through the painful and complicated process of dismantling the city's monuments to white supremacy. For criticism, the finalists are Mark Swed of the Los Angeles Times, Craig Jenkins of New York Magazine, Wesley Morris of the New York Times, and the prize is awarded to Wesley Morris of the New York Times for unrelentingly relevant and deeply engaged criticism on the intersection of race and culture in America, written in a singular style, alternately playful and profound. For editorial writing, the finalists are Alan Wurzbicki and Rachel G. Cohn of the Boston Globe, Robert Green of the Los Angeles Times, Lee Hochstadter of the Washington Post, and the prize is awarded to Robert Green of the Los Angeles Times for editorials on policing, bail reform, prisons, and mental health that clearly and holistically examined the Los Angeles criminal justice system. No prize was awarded in editorial cartooning. The finalists were Ken Fisher drawing as Reuben Balling for Tom the Dancing Bug, Andrews McMeal Syndicate, Lalo Alcaraz, Andrews McMeal Syndicate, Marty Tubles Sr., freelance cartoonist. For breaking news photography, the finalists are Photography Staff of Associated Press, Hassan Amar, Hussein Mala, and Felipe Dana of Associated Press. Joshua Urwandi, freelance photographer, National Geographic. And the prize is awarded to the photography staff of the Associated Press for a collection of photographs from multiple U.S. cities that cohesively captures the country's response to the death of George Floyd. For feature photography, the finalists are Emilio Morinati of Associated Press, the staff of Getty Images, Tyler Hicks of The New York Times, and the prize is awarded to Emilio Morinati of the Associated Press for a poignant series of photographs that takes viewers into the lives of the elderly in Spain struggling during the COVID-19 pandemic. For audio reporting, the finalists are staffs of the Invisible Institute, Chicago, The Intercept and Topic Studios. Lisa Hagen, Chris Haxel, Graham Smith, and Robert Little of National Public Radio. The staff of National Public Radio. And the prize is awarded to Lisa Hagen, Chris Haxel, Graham Smith, and Robert Little of National Public Radio for an investigative series on no-compromise gun rights activists that illuminated the profound differences and deepening schism between American conservatives. For public service, the finalists are The New York Times, The Courier-Journal, Louisville, Kentucky, ProPublica, and the prize is awarded to the New York Times, for courageous, prescient, and sweeping coverage of the coronavirus pandemic that exposed racial and economic inequities, government failures in the U.S. and beyond, and filled a data vacuum that helped local governments, healthcare providers, businesses, and individuals to be better prepared and protected. Letters, Drama, and Music For drama, the finalists are Circle Jerk, by Michael Breslin and Patrick Foley. The Hot Wing King by Katori Hall. Stew by Zora Howard. And the prize is awarded to The Hot Wing King by Katori Hall. A funny, deeply felt consideration of black masculinity and how it is perceived, filtered through the experiences of a loving gay couple and their extended family as they prepare for a culinary competition. For history, the finalists are the Deviant's War, The Homosexual versus the United States of America, by Eric Servini. Franchise, The Golden Arches in Black America, by Marsha Chatlin. The Three-Cornered War, The Union, the Confederacy, and Native Peoples in the Fight for the West, by Megan Kate Nelson. And the prize is awarded to Franchise, The Golden Arches in Black America, by Marsha Chatlin. A nuanced account of the complicated role the fast food industry plays in African-American communities, 
a portrait of race and capitalism that masterfully illustrates how the fight for civil rights has been intertwined with the fate of black businesses. For biography, the finalists are Red Comet, The Short Life and Blazing Art of Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark, Stranger in the Shogun City, A Japanese Woman and Her World by Amy Stanley, The Dead Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X by the late Les Payne and Tamara Payne, and the prize is awarded to The Dead Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X by the late Les Payne and Tamara Payne a powerful and revelatory account of the civil rights activist built from dozens of interviews, offering insight into his character, beliefs, and the forces that shaped him. For poetry, the finalists are A Treatise on Stars by Maymay Bersenbrugge, Post-Colonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz, In the Lateness of the World by Carolyn Forche. The prize is awarded to Post-Colonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz, a collection of tender, heart-wrenching, and defiant poems that explore what it means to love and be loved in an America beset by conflict. For general nonfiction, the finalists are Minor Feelings, an Asian-American Reckoning by Kathy Park Hong, Yellow Bird, Oil, Murder, and a Woman's Search for Justice in Indian Country by Sierra Crane Murdoch, Wilmington's Lie, The Murderous Coup of 1898 and the Rise of White Supremacy by David Zucchino. And the prize is awarded to Wilmington's Lie, The Murderous Coup of 1898 and the Rise of White Supremacy by David Zucchino. A gripping account of the overthrow of the elected government of a black majority North Carolina city after Reconstruction that untangles a complicated set of power dynamics cutting across race, class, and gender. For music, the finalists are Place by Ted Hearn, recording released on April 3, 2020. Stride by Tanya Leon, premiered on February 13, 2020 at David Geffen Hall, Lincoln Center, New York City. Data Lords by Maria Schneider, recording released on July 24, 2020 by the Maria Schneider Orchestra. And the prize is awarded to Stride by Tanya Leon, premiered on February 13, 2020 at David Geffen Hall, Lincoln Center, New York City. A musical journey full of surprise with powerful brass and rhythmic motifs that incorporate black music traditions from the U.S. and the Caribbean into a Western orchestral fabric. For fiction, the finalists are The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich, A Registry of My Passage Upon the Earth by Daniel Mason, Telephone by Percival Everett, and the prize is awarded to The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich, a majestic polyphonic novel about a community's efforts to halt the proposed displacement and elimination of several Native American tribes in the 1950s, rendered with dexterity and imagination. In addition, the Pulitzer Prize Board is pleased to award a special citation to Darnella Frazier for courageously recording the murder of George Floyd, a video that spurred protests against police brutality around the world, highlighting the crucial role of citizens in journalists' quests for truth and justice.